All right. Welcome to We Love LA. This is Tele Tuesday, where we talk about fun, freedom, and fulfillment. I am your host, Sheena. Welcome. The artist of today is Beacon. Um, this has been a trying weekend, and so I will say this is um, matching my mood. But um, yes. This weekend we experienced a full moon and the energy and the vibration this weekend has been um, very intense, very intense. And um, just want to know if there's anybody out there that could have been experiencing the same um, feeling, emotions or anything like that, um, go ahead and just leave a comment below. But um, this weekend was a really big eye-opener for me and it was more of me understanding you know my purpose and getting back to you know me being that strong woman and not saying strong independent but just being strong at my will being strong wielded into making sure that I need to do what I have to do to secure myself. Um, why am I even talking of this? Hi, sis. Welcome on board. Um, got my girl Melly Mel in the building. Um, so this weekend, I had experienced looking at the um, Black is King on Disney+. Plus. Um, so if you're not for sure what that is, I highly recommend you watch it. Um, especially if this came at the right time, the right moment with all of this that's happening with Black Lives Matter, the movement, protesting and things like that. But um, basically just a breakdown and I'm not going to spoil it, but it is a soundtrack that Beyonce had curated into a music video. You know Beyonce, she loves to do little spoilers and make like videographies of like her whole albums so um just like black panther where um kendrick lamar he was like an executive producer to the black panther soundtrack so was beyonce for the lion king soundtrack and so um with the whole black is king on disney plus it um basically break down the whole movie of the lion king with music videos and there's so many messages so many messages that was um planted into the um the videos in the movie and it was so beautiful that it was so touching to me but it was so like like it touched me to the point where i had to sit down and just like you know what and I watched it about four times this weekend, too. I watched it by myself. I watched it with my good friend, Aisha. And I um, took a look at it with my friend, Ivory. She was looking at it at her house on Saturday. And I made my aunt and my grandmother watch it. And we sat as a family and we watched it. And normally my grandmother complains about stuff that is too black. <laughs> not that she's not, you know, black or against black. But it's like, oh, that's, that's too much. But that's her era but she didn't do that so I was super excited she really enjoyed the costuming the scenery was amazing the costumes was amazing I mean the messages was very touching to a point where I mean it hit me emotionally and not just saying that oh I'm a pansy which I am but it hit me on a spiritual level where I felt as if I was connecting back to what I was um, wandering away from and so it this weekend was really really tough and so the word of the day that is sticking out to me is legacy what do I mean by legacy and I'm not drinking today I'm drinking water legacy to me legacy was 
the biggest thing that stood out to me and with legacy comes with purpose because in order for you to actually create a legacy and have a legacy to leave a legacy behind you have to have purpose and about 10 years I say maybe about 11 12 years ago um, I had an epiphany with myself and I realized that I knew what my purpose was by being here on this earth and I couldn't quite fine tooth exactly what I was supposed to do but I knew what I was supposed to do and that's when I started this whole journey searching how can I fulfill this purpose my purpose that was spoken to me was to help people how did that happen well I just started to pay attention to the things that was kind of like why is this happening why is it happening so much and you're like it's happening all the time and then it turned into you know what instead of complaining about it embrace it and so I started to embrace what was happening at that time and that's when I realized that this is my purpose I am supposed to be amongst all of these things and I am supposed to be a connector and so my life purpose is helping people by being a connector and so I know that I am that person that I bridge the gap in between what's hard and what's easy now how exactly do I do that that's still an ongoing journey but I will say through my own experiences through life the things that I've gone through I've actually been able to share several stories and examples with people that I've gone down the path that they may be heading or on or that they just left and how to cope with it how to get through it how to keep going and so I started to really embrace that message that I was giving to people and embracing the hurt and embracing the the situations that people have been going through and so um, that's my purpose and so with me elaborating on that that's my life journey on figuring out you know how I am supposed to continuously keep bridging that gap and connecting people to their happiness to whatever it is that they're trying to overcome and so um, how does this get into legacy how does this get into the purpose well through my journey these last I would say 10 years I've been searching for a way how to help people and I thought maybe I should go to school to be a psychiatrist or a psychotherapist then I started realizing Sheena you don't like school <laughs> why you're going to spend more money to go to school I'm not saying that school is bad and I'm not saying that don't go to school go to school go to school if it makes sense to you but for me to be a, a, a psychiatrist it didn't make sense and so I didn't go that path. On top of that, I was already 70 something thousand dollars in student loan debt too, and I couldn't even qualify to go back unless I pay out of pocket. So I digress on that. But um, after that, I just worked a bunch of jobs just to get by. Never liked any one of them. I would say out of my whole working career, I may have worked four jobs that I actually liked. And out of those four jobs, um, I was only let go from one. The other three, I voluntarily went on my own. But, anywho, um, I worked a bunch of various jobs just to get by, to still figure out what it is that I'm supposed to do and still have fun. I've always been a fun spirit. I love to have fun. I love to laugh. And I don't think that I've actually laughed and had fun in a very long time. I would say about six years. I don't think I had a really good time in six years. 
I've had some good times, but not on a consistent basis how I used to. But anywho, um, that's just a little bit of truth. Um, I'm being raw right now. But anywho, um, I came across a couple of friends that were getting involved in things and I was invited. And I thought maybe, you know, I am supposed to be a business owner. I've always wanted to be a business owner. I've always wanted to have my own. I've always had three goals, um, a small business goal, a medium business goal, and a major business goal. And I would say my small business goal is really starting to pick up to where I can start on my medium business goal, which is going to open up so many windows for the large business goal. Now, I'm not going to share what it is, but um, it is part of my mission, part of my purpose, and everything that I've ever did was never about being selfish of me, but it was always about um, what is it that I'm doing for other people? And so with that, I decided, oh, let's be a nurse. So I decided to go to CNA school and I paid for that out of pocket. Didn't have no money to do it and I was broke. Nobody helped me, but I did it thinking I, I want to help people. Let me start off with CNA and if I like it, I can move into nursing and yeah. I did CNA for about maybe a year or two wasn't really my thing but I actually did like some of my clients that I had and um, being able to spend time with them understand them get to know them for who they are understand their stories and understand their struggles I mean I remember meeting this one elderly lady I was doing my clinical hours at a convalescent home hey Jermaine welcome on welcome to we love LA um, it just so happened, you know, she's sharing her story about you know, her heydays when she was younger and she used to travel the world and she had men to just drown her in furs and diamonds and gems and stuff. And we're young and we should see the world and all the stuff like that. And I'm like, hmm, that is smart. I, I do want to do that. I don't have kids. Like I'm young. I can still do this. And so... You know, that was inspiring. And then also, I met another patient that was legally blind. Now, nobody didn't want to help this guy because they said he was mean and he was so particular. And so they just called him all kind of names. And so it just so happened to be my turn to go and feed him his lunch. And I'm going in there and I'm speaking to him. And he was like, can you fold my napkin this way? Can you place it right here? This Now, all this time, he's watching TV. And so I'm just like, mm, why here? So I just started to ask questions. Come to find out the man was blind. And nobody did not know he was blind. And so everybody was like, oh, he's so mean. I don't want to deal with him because he's mean. He was very particular because him being blind if things was done in a particular way then he would know how to be able to serve himself so even that was just a humbling experience and then helping him be able to get some of the information that he needed so he can go on with his life and stuff like that and so that was humbling there too but that was a, another lesson where i was the connector during that time and so, um, hey, what's up, Mo? Welcome on. We love LA. Also, um, even just, you know, experiencing that he wasn't a mean guy. He and, and he even shared with me about, oh yeah, you should go to the to go to San Francisco and see the opera, ride the train, do this, do that, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like yes. I'm, I'm learning all of these things from other people and still there was a connection that was being made but again I didn't continue with that and so um, that's when I was introduced to this company called World Ventures. World Ventures is 
the number one VIP lifestyle travel club in the world. And I promise you, the best ex travel experience that I've ever had. Um, I've met the most amazing people and I've learned a lot about myself, about business, about people just in general. And so again, how is it that I'm able to be this connector? I saw World Ventures as an opportunity to bring my family together. Um, I was raised used to having family coming over every weekend. And as a kid, I was like, oh, we having company. We having company over. And you know, when people get older and people get set in their ways and people fight and you don't know why they're fighting, family stop coming around. And so that was disheartening to me that everything that I was so used to, it wasn't happening anymore. No more holidays, no more weekends. It's just oldness and bitterness. And so, um, I thought that World Ventures would have been a way to gather the family together. We can have our family reunions away, go on cruises and things like that. Didn't work out. So, hey, let me get all my friends together because I've always thought about my friends. Now me, I was the only child for 15 years and so friends was like family. They was really important to me because when you're a kid and you've been like growing up by yourself, you don't have any siblings or you don't have any cousins that's near your age, then you're kind of like always playing by yourself, make believe and everything. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you have your friends and they're always there for you and they are around, your friends are like family. And at the same time, you picked those people to be in your lives, which means that those people are very special because you personally handpicked them. But get all my friends together get all of you know their friends and we can all have a good time and I've always thought about hey what is it that you're good at what is it that you're good at what are you good at how can we all take all of our skills and come together and all have something talk to all my friends like that and none of them were just oh well you know I just want to work okay that's fine that's why I had to realize that my vision that I had for us and for me and for everybody else and the potential that I saw in other people, they didn't see it in themselves. And not saying that that's bad, it's just it's all about timing. And so, of course, my own circle and surroundings didn't understand that vision, so we didn't really do that either. But the people who I became friends with over time, we were able to have a couple of trips together and fun and stuff like that and some people who I was able to bless them where they can get their family and friends together they jumped on board but what I realized was that they wasn't able to maintain the they wasn't able to maintain what they had and they got out of the business they didn't do the business they didn't keep their membership or anything like that because What's the one thing that we all are dealing with right now? Time and money. And it was, you know, there was a lot of money but no time, or there's no money and a lot of time. And so it's only really 5% of the world population that have an equal amount of time and money. And so I wanted to be that connector that way and teaching people how they can monetize their time and have the money at the same time to do the things that they love, to be around the people who they love. And so on this journey, I came across some really amazing information on how to grow and protect your money. Understand that our greatest assets is ourselves. We have to get out there and we have to make money. If we don't work, we don't eat. If we depend on somebody else to determine how much they think our time is worth, to determine how much they think we should have to work, how am amount of how much work we have to do, and on top of that, how I dress, how I look, how I wear my hair, am I a woman of color, am I a man of color, how many of us are in the workplace, like, that hurts. Hey sis! Welcome 
to We Love LA. Thank you for joining in. But going through the reality of having somebody to dictate what we are able to do when it comes down to our own lives, I had a problem with that. And so I knew that my purpose, just for my own self, was finding my own freedom. My own freedom of the society of not being told when, where, how, how much, all of those things like that. And so that freedom comes with me being able to be that connector to help other people to their freedom. Being that connector to help other people to not be a burden on each other. The worst thing that I cannot stand seeing, driving down the street and seeing people asking for money because they need to bury a loved one or someone is in the hospital and they need money for medical bills. Like That is the most thing that hurt my feelings the most. Now, I live in Compton. Yes, I am a hood girl, but I know better. I know what's wrong and I know what's right. So don't judge girls that come from, just don't judge people, period, that comes from stereotypical areas. Hey, sis, welcome. Um, because there are a lot of intelligent people that are out here, but then there's also a lot of people who want to know better, who want to do better, but they don't know where to start. And I shared all of those other stories before about my journey because that was me learning and experiencing life through the lens of somebody else's view and telling me that I have an opportunity to do something. And so me living in my community, I want to be able to do the same. I don't want to see my community asking for money so they can bury somebody or pay a medical bill that's that's horrible and we all have to be accountable for ourselves but if we don't properly plan how we can be available to our family members if we can't even take care of ourselves and now our family members have to stop what they are doing so they can take care of us but that's I don't think that's how our creator wanted things to be and so my mission and my purpose is to give back to my community to be that connector to be able to teach people how you are able to be prepared for everything and do what the wealthy people are doing not saying stealing and killing and all of those things like that but being prepared we have to be prepared. Everybody, oh, I'm gonna die one day. No, that's not the worst thing that could ever happen to you. When you die, you are no longer here and everything just stopped. The people who are left here are gonna miss you. But if something was to happen to you where you are critically ill, you're paralyzed, something, you can't even be an independent person anymore. Somebody have to take care of you. Now, you're going to feel bad about yourself because now somebody else has to stop their lives and take care of you. They have to be able to find a way how to make extra money to pay for your expenses and things like that. And so that's the reality. And it's, it's just being more prominent now because the food that we're eating, the, the chemicals in the air, cancer is at an all-time high cancer is right next to cardiovascular disease. I worked for a cardiovascular clinic and I would say this working there was the turning point for me of like this is what I am supposed to be doing. I am a connector and I am supposed to help people. And so cardiovascular disease is number one. And all it is is circul your body is not circulating the oxygenated blood to the rest of your body to nourish those organs, those tissues, all of those other areas. And when that 
oxygenated blood is not circulating through the body, it causes kidney failure, lung failure. Um, everything else starts to just slowly break down. Cancer is now easy and more receptive. All of these things. And so, again, my mission is to educate people. My mission is to connect people. Either is to connect you by having fun, connecting you with understanding your money, connecting you with growing your business, connecting you with even just emotional distress. All of that is my mission. And part of my mission by giving back to my community and giving back to other people is going to, that will build my legacy. That is the legacy to making sure that any future family of mine will be able to look back and say, hey, that was great, great, great Auntie Sheena. Here's her picture on top of the mantle. Like she was this, she did that. She was able to make sure our family had. She made sure that, you know, our family didn't have to go through this, you know? The education is out there, but they want us to spend our money for it when it's in the books for free. We have a powerful computer in our pockets, the iPhones, the Androids, the whatever, the Samsungs, like we can Google everything and we can get the answers or just go and read a damn book. All the answers has always been in the book, but... I digress and again this was about legacy and legacy is very important because when you are building something you want to make sure your foundation is so set to the point that nobody can come in and blow it down and it's funny I say that legacy kind of reminds me of the story of the three pigs and me I'm very simple Three pigs, we all know the story. One little piggy made his house out of straw. One little piggy made his house out of stick because the other little piggy made his house out of bricks. And of course, when the big bad wolf came, blew down the straw, blew down the sticks, went to the brick house, couldn't blow it down. And so that brick house is the foundation of your life. You wanna make sure that that foundation that you have set, nobody can come down and disrupt what you have. That even come back to one of my very first talk about being self-sufficient. One of the talks, one of the, one of the conversations I cannot stand, and that is the stigma of being a independent black woman. Independent black woman, you don't need a man and this, this and that not true and that's not what I'm talking about if there is a man and if there is a woman and if a man got a house built out of straws and sticks <laughs> and then this woman she got a house built out of bricks and then the earthquake came his house is gonna fall down and guess what he trying to run up into your place now not trying to say that he don't belong there but he should know that he need to have his own and he need to come correct or he need to bring something to the table. And the same thing for a woman. She can't come running over here thinking, oh, he's supposed to take care of me. Because guess what happens? If, you know, you have this man and woman and they're coming together and both of them are not stable or say one is stable and the other isn't. Now say gold digger girlfriend, cause I'm using both parties as an example. Say the gold digger girlfriend She's only with this guy for the money. He falls for it. She don't know nothing about nothing. He dies. And now his family is coming after everything because she don't know nothing about nothing. She didn't have none of her security, none of her foundation, nothing set in place. All she was was, let me get off of you. If she would have came with her own brick house, and if he no longer exists now, she has something to go back to her own without trying to figure out where I'm gonna get my next meal. And this applies to everybody. And so, again, you gotta make sure that whatever purpose that you're walking in, 
make sure that that's what you really want and understand what the consequences is going to be but the whole purpose of life is what are you doing for others what are you doing for the world yes we put the oxygen mask on ourselves first because we have to be a walking testimony being selfish like that is only for a walking testimony because now you have a story of your experience that you can share to where now you're sharing it with other people so they can be greater as well when you're experiencing and you taking all of the knowledge to yourself and you're not sharing it with other people that's selfishness and if a woman is out there making sure that her foundation is set so when she do come into the picture another example I have over I have close to two hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt I have no degree and I'm being raw and I'm being honest so if anybody is wanting to talk to me you know what you know what you're getting into but I know what I am bringing and I choose not to bring that to anybody's table because that's not their problem that's my problem but if I was to marry somebody that has a one credit no debt anything like that they have good debt and stuff like that my two hundred thousand dollar debt becomes their problem say if I got you know married a guy that's on child support that's my child support now you know and so again this is not trying to bash anybody or say don't do this but this is about understanding your purpose in life and how this is going to play an effect on what you're going to do and how you're going to create a legacy and so yeah watch the black um, black is king on net um, no it's on Disney plus is super super amazing and um, just listen to some of the messages just listen to the messages now, not to offend anybody that is not black or African American or African or African descent or Afro Latino, whatever. This is a movie that is not saying that other nationalities are not good. This is a reminder to a lot of the cultures of people that came from Africa that was stripped away from everything that they knew to become a whole new group of people having to be stripped away of not knowing any of their culture their lineage their ancestors and so this was a reminder of letting those groups of people to know like hey it's okay know that you are strong know where you come from just to know and everything is beautiful everybody else is beautiful everybody has their own history and culture it's just that a lot of the african culture has been the stories have been told differently and so i highly recommend that everybody watch it so everybody can be on the same page and understand the love that we should all have for each other and so understanding yourself understanding the situations that you're going through to understand your purpose and understanding why you are here on this earth and what you are supposed to be doing and taking that knowledge sharing it with the world sharing it with the community and create a legacy that is God's purpose you be fruitful you multiply you make babies and you teach them how to be good people show them how to continue what you have created for them that's a legacy and that struck a chord with me this weekend because I felt as if I was being strayed away from my purpose I was being weakened and I was allowing myself to be weakened to not fulfill my purpose. And so 
for anybody that could be going through the same thing where you feel as if you're not on the right track or you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing or you know you're supposed to be doing more and you just don't know how dm me call me text me i'm all open ears and we can get all of this you know we can get through this together i also want to give my girl kia a shout out thank you for giving me a call this morning i was emotionally going through the roller coasters and not because i'm a woman and women women are emotional creatures but just spiritually i felt something and i just want to thank you for calling me today and checking on me and um I think that was a spiritual connection where you was able to sense something. And so, thank you, sis. Also, thank you, Aisha, for being there for me this weekend and us catching up. Um, it's really important to really decipher the people who are in your corner. Because another story, Noah's Ark. I like stories. Um... Noah, he was he was told something. He was told that there was something great that was going to happen and he was chosen to you know be that person to fulfill that mission. Just like me, I said I have a purpose. And when you stray away from your purpose, you are going to be attacked. You're going to be attacked. But Noah, he stayed on track with his mission and he spread the word. He told the people, "Hey, we're supposed to get on this boat and I told her I was supposed to build this boat and you're supposed to be on it and everybody laughed at him ah oh, you don't know what you're talking about well why are you making it so big well I made it so big so it can fit all of us but you guys don't want to come I will bring the animals and we're just going to start all over with us and the animals so I feel the same way where we share things with people and there are some people, nah, I'm good, I don't want to do nothing, nah, it's alright. And it hurt, because these be your family, these be your best friends, you know you see greater in these people, nah, I don't care, I don't want to do nothing, nah. But it's just like, we have to keep going. And so, here we are today. And, um, yeah, so, sit down really pay attention to what is distracting you pay attention to what is irking you it's not a bad scenario but it's like oh my god something just keeps keeps bothering me that could be your purpose and when you walk with purpose you walk with your head up high you have confidence in what you're doing and that's how you can figure out how you are going to create a legacy and so continue watching i'm here for you if you want to love on me love on me i'll love on you need to talk i'm here you want to vent i'm here chat i'm here you want to curse and scream i'm here you want to laugh i am here but I'm also here to make sure that you are good because I am the connector and that is my purpose and I am building my legacy. Everybody have a good night. Um, again, this is Sheena. I am your host with We Love LA. It's Tell It Tuesday. And um, double tap, like the video, subscribe to my youtube channel we where are we going now she that's s-h-e-e -E. and have a safe night have a safe weekend